Good morning, everybody. David McLeod here from Belmont, California. Sorry for starting late. I had some technical problems on my end, was unable to get onto the channel this morning. Uh, but thankfully, my buddy and co-host Tommy was sitting there waiting patiently for me to show up. And here we are. And uh, we're going to be talking today about habits and how they sometimes can help us and how they sometimes can hinder us. Good morning, Tommy. Welcome back. Good to see you again, brother. Hey, David. Good day. And hello, everyone out there in webinar land. Yeah, what, 92 episodes of being exactly on time, and now we're four minutes late. Damn it. Damn it. There goes our, there goes our record of perfection. Uh, yeah. Which we'll talk about another day. But, um, but hey, I'm glad, happy to be here, even if we're a few minutes late. And today we're going to talk about habits. And um, I'll just start it off. And, and David, you nicely wrote up the write-ups about this. Of, of Often when we think about habits, we think about bad habits. And we think about, you know, the number one bad habit was this TV commercial that was, you know, buried in our heads uh, years ago about smoking, bad habit of smoking. And we have habits, right? Of, and, but, but, and the ones we norm, most commonly think of is uh, disappearing off the screen, <clears throat> like David just said, and, <laughs> and smoking and drinking and overeating and all these things, right? So, yeah, we can talk about those a bit because they're rooted and, and foundationally there's underpinnings of things that we do, behaviors that we have. That's what we're talking about when we talk about a habit, right, is a, is a behavior we have that, that either we like or we don't like. And sometimes we want to keep them. Sometimes we want to maybe think about getting rid of them. So, David, that's about as much of an intro as I think we need. Um, yeah, I, I think you're right, Tommy. I mean, uh, certainly... Uh, you know, when we talk about smoking, for example, that's one of the habits that I had. I, I started smoking when I was maybe 13 years old, and I quit smoking when I was 32. And uh, I'll tell you, quitting that habit was a very, very difficult thing to do. It, was, it took a lot of effort. It was a very challenging thing for me to do. Another habit I had was, was alcohol. I used to drink a lot. And, uh, you know, I quit that about 11, 12 years ago now. So, you know... Habits serve us for some for some amount of time, and they may they may, may they may have some purpose in our lives that we don't necessarily understand. I believe that every habit just starts out as a as a way of thinking, a way of uh, behaving that serves us for a brief period of time, and maybe we get some gratification out of it. Maybe we get some. Maybe we believe that we're getting some love out of it, or maybe we're getting some of that approval that we want, or whatever it is. We're getting something out of it. And we think that if we continue that behavior, we'll continue to get that thing that we think is so important to us. The problem is, after a while, we, we start losing or, or not getting as much of that gratification. And so that's what happens sometimes is people jump from one addiction to another, looking for that, for that high, for that gratification. And the problem is, it's just not going to be there. And so what we're trying to do here today is just raise awareness about different kinds of habits that we have, some of which might be really good habits. For example, exercising. Getting into the habit of exercise could be a great habit, as long as you don't overdo it, you know? So it's a question of finding that balance. It's a question of knowing what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. I think that's really what we're talking about here, Tommy. Yeah, I totally agree, David. It's a, it's a great topic. It's, it's one that... Um that everyone can relate to, and so that's why we're here talking about it. Now, you said very, very nicely that that they, they maybe we start these habits because they serve a purpose. So I want to explore that a little bit too, because usually what I find is that if I find a habit that I maybe want to change, something I want to change, <clears throat> my a behavior that that I've adopted, it helps me to go back to see <clears throat> the root cause, where it started from, and. And, and I can speculate on on smoking because I did a little bit of that, you know, in high school. And, and why was I attracted to it? Because guess what? I could hang out with the cool kids. Yeah. I could be one of the cool kids. And mm -hmm. as you said, you get acceptance or, you know, that sense of, 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 of you're part of the gang. You're part of the cool kids. Yeah. So that's how sometimes these habits start. They start because we think it's, you know, wow, it's going to do something for me. It's going to... I used to drink like you, David, I used to, and I personally used to drink too much uh, for a long part of my life, and and um, and I've since quit that as well. 
But I look back on that. Why did I do that? Well, I thought I was I was funnier when I was a little buzzed. I, I you know, I, I was I could I could converse with people a little freer when I was a little, you know, had a few beers in me. Mm -hmm. So that's how these things start. And maybe it's overeating or maybe it's shopping. And you can all you, know, you can look back and, and find out, like you said, that that elevated feeling, that that buzz. And not only, you know, an alcohol buzz or a, or a smoke buzz, but it's an it's a it's a feeling that we're like somehow better accepted or we're funnier or we're nicer or we're you know better. That's where these that's where the the the, the, the they start, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, you know, I had pretty much the same combination of thoughts going through my head. Oh, if I smoke, I could be part of that gang, you know, that group. Uh, if I drink, then I'm going to be one of the cool guys. And, you know, I, I prided myself on being able to drink a lot and still not fall up, fall down and get under the table or whatever. You know, that was just a complete illusion in my mind. But I, I convinced myself that I was one hell of a power drinker. And, um, and so it, it had a way, I think under, underneath all that, what I was really trying to do was I was trying to bolster my own confidence. I was trying to strengthen myself so that I could show up in a, in a more powerful way in the world. That's ultimately what I was trying to do. What I didn't realize is that I was damaging my body in the process. And in fact, even though I may have thought I was showing up in a more confident and competent way, I was actually probably looking very stupid and foolish to a lot of people, you know? And of course, anybody who would comment on that, I'd say, oh, that's just your stuff. Leave me out of it, you know? So yeah, there are those, those elements of it. But what on the other side of that coin, the other side is part of what I did. So I, I noticed that I had thoughts like these. Oh, you're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You, know, you didn't do that right. You didn't show up the right way. And what I would do is, I, I thought that another thing that was working for me was drinking helped to quiet that voice. And it did it for a little while. Eventually, then another voice would creep in. Oh, you drink too much. You're a drunk. You're an idiot when you're drunk. You get angry when you're drunk. More judgment started showing up. So I was developing all kinds of other habits that I wasn't even aware of while engaging in these two obvious habits that I was okay with. That's what's really interesting, is how my whole mindset shifted and I started to become very negative on myself. Very, uh, I was very self-defeating, critical, judgmental. Uh, all that stuff started happening to me because I didn't have a very high opinion of myself. So I think that's where some of the darker and more shadowy habits start showing up. And those are the ones I really want to bring people's awareness to. Absolutely. And man, you're, you're resonating with, I'm sure everyone who's watching and listening, you're resonating with me. It's, it's, I hear those same voices, right? I heard those same voices in my head. What, what this is in the language that we talk about today, David, is, is, you know, ego. It's a, if it's, this alcohol is an, a confidence booster or hanging out with a cool gang is a confidence booster. And then it, that evolved into being more of a, a self crit you know, it can evolve into being coming a critic, a very judgmental self critic. <clears throat> so regardless of whether we're, you know, supporting or bolstering our confidence or, or killing ourselves with our inner critic, they're both ego boosters. Yeah. They're both just serving the almighty ego. <laughs> and whatever. So these habits tend to have roots in serving the ego and giving the ego purpose and giving the ego strength and character and confidence and humor and 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 judgment and critic and nastiness and shadow. Um, Absolutely. So very quickly we come back to the same root cause of things that this ego is 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 a is a tricky nasty bastard. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, I, I resonate with that. <laughs> and that's not to say I have, you know, eliminated ego from my life at all. I, you know, ego, as we have said many, many times here before, ego is necessary for us to be able to, to live and work on this physical plane. And once we leave the physical plane, presumably ego won't be necessary anymore. And we can, you know, 
be living our lives in a full 100% authentic spiritual way. But part of, I, I, I think, part of our journey is to, is to learn how to really appreciate our spirituality by maybe separating from it, or at least having the illusion of separation from it. And, and one of the ways we do that is by developing these habits, these, these thought patterns, these processes that go on in our mind to keep us feeling like that separation, so that we can re-experience it and reconnect to it and, and grow back into it, and then really appreciate what it is that we have. So there's, I think there's a positive outcome in the long run to this, although many of us don't see that in the course of our lives. And what Tommy and I are here to do is to help you see that now so that you can really start to blossom and open up and, and really uh, live your life in an authentic way, be connected to your soul and who you really are, and be connected to that purpose that you were brought here to do. And so one of the ways that, one of the things that I think you'll need to do in order to be able to accomplish that is to start bringing awareness to these habits and just one at a time, finding a way of, you know, gently letting them go. Yeah, well, and well, exactly, David. And we'll talk about like, some examples or, or, re, or ways of how to let it go, how to how to find a habit, dig it up, identify it, look at it, and, and dismantle it. We'll we'll talk about that in the later in the show. But I want to you you hit a very beautiful point here is that we've we've had these experiences in life for a reason. We're meant to learn things in life. We're meant to experience things. And whether it's experiencing happiness and joy, if we experience happiness and joy all the time, that life would be kind of flat and boring. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, life is meant to have ups and downs and experiences like this. And and so it's something that may may you may look back on and say, oh, that was a bad habit. No, it was an experience that you had in this life to experience something, to learn something. And hopefully, if it's something that no longer serves you and you want to let go of it, it's something that that's why you learned it. You learned how to let go of something. You learned how to let go of, of something that was holding you down or holding you back. And so the, in the learning is where the gift is. And no matter what it looks like on the surface, whether it was heaven or it was hell, we, we need to learn from it. So um, so as you were also talking about um, the ego too, right? The ego serves a purpose. I, I come back and I kind of bring this metaphor back to us once in a while about this, this ship, right? There's a ship sailing in the ocean, call it in like a nice old wooden schooner with the three mast sails, the ship. And, and at some point you're, you're the captain, you're like a, a kid behind the steering wheel and you're telling, you know, knowing where to go and what to go on. But somehow along the way, the, the crew, your, your crew gets restless, your, your parts of your ego get restless and they decide that they don't like the way you're running the show or whatever happens. And they 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 go mutiny on you, and they lock you up and throw you in the brig, and and now yeah. you're you know you're you're down there in the brig, and you you your your sense of right can't do anything, and you got all these crazy nuts on board running the show. You got some guy up in the crow's nest who's screaming, look out! Look, every everything is like look out, and then you, all the fear and the worry, and and, and he's and he's yelling down in anger, look out, you idiots! And and there's one guy sitting in the corner just sucking on the, the rum and looking around, another another one sitting in another corner of the boat and. And that's what happens in our head. Yeah. We, we get these bad habits and all these like mutinous crew members can look, be looked at as perhaps habits that mm -hmm. we need to shift. We need to retrain. We need to train, retrain our, our mind or ego, which is useful. And as you said, we need it to live in this world to retrain our crew members to do their job uh, as opposed to um, having gone off the deep end. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I think we did an episode about uh, – freeing that, that part of ourselves and, and somehow taking back command of our ship. I mean, we've done episodes on various topics, but I, I do recall doing that. And, but I think this is a really good metaphor because if, if you imagine each of those habits as being one of, those, one of the members of the crew, uh, that's just a different aspect of the ego. And the whole, the, fa the, the whole mutiny was taking place by the ego. The ego thinks it runs things. The, th the ego thinks that it owns the whole ship. The ego thinks that it, it's important because it's keeping you safe in this world, and certainly that is true. However, if the ego gets out of control, if we allow that ego to get out of control, well, guess what? Our, our ship, which really is just running all over the place, is eventually going to crash on the rocks, you know, or get submerged, you know, by the ice or something like that. Something bad is going to happen to the ship. And it may be disastrous. It may be 
just hitting bottom and realizing, oh, I'm going to have to change my life. I don't know what, what it means to each individual person. But every one of us is going to have our own experience of that. But, and so here we are today talking about these habits. And so the question I would ask for you is, what habits do you have that are about making yourself wrong or making yourself bad or making yourself small or making yourself, you know, hold back? What kind of habits do you have like that? Do you have a voice in your head that says you're no good? Do you have a voice in your head that constantly criticizes you no matter how you show up? You know, these are the questions that I think all of us need to answer for ourselves. We need to look at those questions and we need to just take a breath and see what's really true about those questions. Because if we can say, yes, there is that voice, or yes, there is this pattern, or yes, of this, then we may be able to find, oh, maybe that explains why I like going shopping a lot, because it gives me that comfort, that sense of self-importance. Or maybe that's why I like to eat a lot of chocolate, or cake, or candy, or whatever. Or maybe that's why I, uh, I sit and watch a lot of TV, because I just want to zone out, because I'm, I, I don't want to feel that stuff. You know, any one of those final outcomes might be related to one of these thought patterns, as Tommy pointed out earlier. So let's start that process right now, Tommy, about getting people into that mindset right now of, of doing a little bit of introspection. Yeah, that's brilliant, because that's the, that's the first step of anything, right, is becoming aware of it. Bring it into your awareness. Okay, this is something that I do. This is a behavior I have. Whether it's an external behavior, like the drinking or the smoking or, you know, bot, or you know not taking care of our bodies or eating fast, whatever. And then there's the internal, which you're, we're also talking to, of like the self, the self-critic and the doubter and the blamer and the complainer and the comparer, the comparer, all these like inner energies, these, you know, there's different crew members on deck and some of them are outwardly, you know, projecting and some of them are inwardly just making a mess. So exactly. the first thing to do is become aware of it. Yeah. And, and if your head is exploding in many directions right now, try to maybe focus on, on one thing that's really kind of troubling you like let's like maybe there's one particular habit that keeps coming up in life that you think about if you think about it like oh yeah you know I yeah I was doing that last week oh yeah my head's doing it right now oh yeah so bring maybe bring up a prevalent one and and think through this process with us because this is how we do it you don't we can't tackle them all at once we can't I don't think we, there's a way yet of of abolishing all bad habits in one snap of a finger so like a good project manager, we, we pick our scope and we put a plan to it. Yeah, yeah. And I want to just say, Tommy, I think we probably have talked about this before, but I just want to bring awareness to this fact again. If When I find that my head is exploding with a lot of stuff, the moment that I become aware of that, that is, that is a very powerful moment because in that moment, that's when I can realize, oh, I'm stepping back and I'm actually observing this now. And when I'm in, in, a, in a state of observing, I can be in a, just a, a state of total fascination and wonder without any sense of judgment. I, it, I think of it as kind of standing on the edge of a cliff and looking out over the ocean and I'm, you know, hundreds of feet up and just feeling that sense of awe, watching the energy unfolding below me as these rocks are being just showered with all this water. That's kind of what it's like for me when I, when I take that step back and I see all this chatter going on in my head. It's like watching that, that energy. And so I can be in a place of simply observing with no attachment to it at all. And in the beauty of that ob observational space is that as I observe, the chatter seems to just quiet on its own. And then as it quiets, then I can start focusing on the actual words that are going on for one particular voice. And then I can just kind of check in and say, wow, that's something that I say to myself. How is that serving me? You know, what am I really trying to get when I say something like that to myself? So there's all kinds of things that I can, I can do as I'm observing that help me to get even more clarity on what might be going on in my mind. David, you're right on. There's, um, there's so much truth and so much power in what you just said about having that ability to pause, to step back. If you're gonna, if you're gonna step back and stand on the cliff and get that distance, sometimes uh, somebody taught me to, to, to go sit in the theater 
and it's an empty theater and you sit in a seat and you look up on the screen and that's what's happening. That's your life. That's the drama that's unfolding or that's the pattern of the behavior. And you distance yourself from it. That's what you said so brilliantly. You, you step back and you distance yourself from it. What that distancing actually does in our minds and in our emotions is it takes us out of the spin cycle of the washing machine. And now we're sitting on the side of the washing machine watching the, 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 just the stuff cycle around in there. Yeah. But we're not caught in it. We're not caught in it, caught in it emotionally, and we're not caught in it, caught in it egoically, like blaming ourselves, like "oh, you dumb fuck." No, we're just watching it, <laughs> and and that gives us the space to to analyze it and to deal with it and to cope with it without being in it. It gives us the ability to respond instead of being in this constant churn and reaction mode. Yeah. So that, that taking, thanks for bringing that up. That taking that pause, taking that break, stepping back, however it feels to you, however that resonates with you, that's part of this practice of, of kicking habits. Yeah. And one of the other things that I've noticed, Tommy, and maybe you've experienced this as well, is the moment I try and push it away, the moment I try and fight it, I notice that my ego loves a good fight. You know, if I get caught up in this, that's not true. My ego says, oh, yes, it is. I can prove it, blah, blah. And it comes up with all kinds of evidence to support its claims and stuff. The moment I start fighting it, it just fights me all over the place. So really, the the key here is is to just notice, notice. And I, I like to, I, I like to use the word accept, but it, it isn't that I'm accepting what the ego is saying as true. It's just accepting that it, this is what it's saying. That's all. You can't change something until you accept it for what it is. That's the first and most important thing. And Tommy said this, awareness is a big part of that process. So once I become aware, then I need to accept. Okay, this is what's happening. This is what's happening in my mind. These are the stories I tell myself. Thank you for the words. Now maybe I can do something about it. And, and don't make the ego wrong. Don't make yourself wrong for having those because then you just add one more thing to judge yourself about. You can judge yourself for being judgmental. Oh my God, it gets it gets twisty. So just, yeah, just accept it. This is what is. I have no judgment about it one way or the other. This is what is. Now I can decide what it is I want to do about it. There is, and I'm, I'm writing notes because there, you're saying, of course, brilliant things, but there's a whole class, there's a whole session we'll do on telling stories because that's what the eagle loves to do. The eagle loves to tell stories and loves to tell dra high drama, high drama. Oh, it's going to go. Oh, it's going wrong. It's like the, the, the mutinous crew on the, on the ship. They're like screaming. They're like willy nillies, nutty, you know, headless, just, just blabbering. The eagle loves creating drama, loves creating stories. And, but underneath any story that our ego is, is promoting is, is a, just the, just the basic facts and the truths. Okay, look, I started drinking um, because I wanted to be, you know, a friend of this guy, cool kid in the neighborhood. And then I, you know, continued that thing and, and, it, and it snowballed. And now if I have one drink, I want two to get the buzz. And if I have two, then my brain shuts off and I have three and four and then game over. All right, that's the truth behind it. Mm -hmm. No drama, no story, no blame. I'm not kicking myself. I'm not hurt, you know, I've forgiven myself because I didn't know what I was doing and on with life. So that's the power of, of addressing um, habits in a very clear way, right? They would just separate the story from the truth, step and do that by stepping back and observing it. And then just decide you're, at that point, you're just a logical human being looking at a logical sequence of events, uh, uh, some you know facts and things that happened in the past. And now you can decide, is that what I wanna keep doing? Maybe. Do I maybe not want to do it anymore? Maybe, but now you have a now you have a logical, clear-headed brain making a decision, as opposed to just constantly being the victim of something that was triggered and started 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yeah, exactly. And and another question that I find helpful for myself is, all right, when I do this, when I do this to myself, what is it underneath that I'm trying to really get for myself? If I do this and I succeed in doing it, what am I really after that I want for myself? 
Well, that's a powerful question because then I can look at it and I say, well, I guess when I beat myself up like that, what I'm trying to do is make myself stronger. I'm trying to make myself show up in a better way. I'm trying to make myself, um, I guess I, I'm trying to make myself be as full of myself as I can, full of my spirit as I can. And all right, that's, that's cool. And there's nothing wrong with that. Is this the best way to do it? That's the next question I ask myself. Is this the best way to get that? Are there other strategies that I could come up with that might help me get that in a more effective way? As soon as I see that there are other possibilities, then I can easily release one habit and say, I think I'm going to practice this instead. I'm going to practice meditating on a regular basis. I'm going to practice just bringing some love into my heart and my soul and letting that love extend out from me. And in doing that, I know that my body and my spirit and everything will just grow naturally. And I will develop the kind of confidence and, and presence that I'm trying to create. And I don't have to do it from a place of ego. So there's a whole bunch of different kinds of questions we can ask ourselves. But if you start with that one question, all right, as I do this, what am I trying to get for myself that I really want? That's a powerful question. And you may get some really amazing answers if you try that. I'm writing down a four-step process based on what we just said. Um, and let, I'm going to say it, and then we'll put some easier words to it. Um, okay, so uh, becoming aware of something, right? There's something that we're doing, a behavior that's either in our head or, or manifesting outwardly that, you know what, I am grossly overweight, or I am just sick and tired of being sick and tired, or I am just, I've had it up to here with that stupid voice in my head, right? So we become aware of something. Then we distance ourselves from it. So however you want to call that, have a pause, have, a, have some distance, step back from it. We're not letting it go, we're now watching it on the screen, or we're imagining that it's outside of us. Or we're looking at a replay of our life, you know, okay, that was that, that situation, over there, it's over there. That way we're not we're not in it emotionally and 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 over and over and clouding up our brain with it. Then diagnose it, and maybe there's a better word for that. But like you said, uh, David, you said, um, "What do I what do I want? What's really the underlying goal of why I'm doing this in the you know in the first place?" So maybe I don't know, if diagnose or uh, analyze, but something like that, right? We need to look under the covers and look for the root cause. <clears throat> yeah. That word works fine for me. Yeah. And then look for a better way. Is there a better way to be? Is there a better way? Is there, what do I, how do I want to change? What change do I want to see in my life? Yeah. Does that kind of feel like it summarizes our? Yeah, I think that captures it. You know, we can probably formalize this a little more later, Tommy, but, you know, it's, it's awareness is always the first thing. I'd like to find an A word that has something to do with, with distance. And then analyze like what's the underlying what's the underlying desire I'm trying to achieve, and then options. What are the other options? What are other ways I can do it? How can I? What other choices can I make that will allow me to get that thing that I think I want? Because after all, what we're doing right now is just a strategy for getting something we want. You know, and it may be a, a strategy that worked for us at one time in the past, and maybe it doesn't work for us anymore. That's why we're looking at this in the first place. I think that self-reflection in this form is extremely useful. And we, I personally believe that we ought to be doing this every single day, maybe multiple times a day, because that is how we grow. You know, we grow from whatever experiences we've had. We bring those, we assimilate them, we bring them back into our, our, our awareness. We find the healing in them and we say, great. Now I've learned something. How do I want to show up in the next iteration? It's it's really amazing, beautiful, ongoing spiraling cycle. It is, and and I'll I'll just speak from personal experience. Once you start it, you want more because you're you're making things better, right? And so you're becoming aware. You're putting yourself apart. If you want another A, I'm I'm apart from it. Well, I, like um, that. I, I analyze it, and then a better way. Yeah. And that's just an upward spiral. It's an, it's a, an existence of upward spiraling goodness and happiness and energy. It's, it's only going in the right direction for you personally. Yep. So to do it every day, yeah, it, because it's fun. 
to do it every day? Yeah, because it's good for you. To do it every day? Yeah, yeah. It just makes sense when you look at it that way. Yeah, and I want to say something here, Tommy. When I choose my alternate way, I, I may discover that it doesn't work as well as the original one. All right, you've learned something. That doesn't mean that you necessarily go back to what you were doing before. You now have two things that don't work. And remember what uh, Thomas Edison did. He found like 9,999 ways of not making a light bulb before he found the one that worked. It's, it's understanding that just because a mistake happens, you are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You have the option of recognizing that a choice you made didn't work and you have a chance to make a new choice. That's what we're talking about here. So don't make yourself wrong if the alternate plan doesn't work out the way you thought it would. Just learn from it and go through the cycle again. Aware, apart, analyze alternatives. Let's be done. <laughs> What are, we, what are we doing next week, my friend? Next week, we're going to be talking about gratitude again. We're going to be talking about bringing gratitude into action. And um, I'm kind of excited about this one. We've, we've, we've brought the subject of gratitude before, but this one's going to be a whole new approach. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So see you all next week. Gratitude on steroids. Peace out. Bye, everybody. <laughs>